Hey, what's going on guys? Sinister Skater here, and can I show you the first ever shot I took with the KBS longbow? Here, look, look at this. Yeah, that was pretty dope, but welcome to episode number 5 of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare Best to Worst, where after I get diamond camo on a weapon class, I've mastered the weapon class, I spend a significant time with each of the weapons, I go in and rank the weapons from best to worst, in my opinion, in hopes that it'll help you guys out, and it's a fun thing to do, see everyone else's list, and um, yeah, so let's hop right into it, we're doing snipers today, one thing to note, the EBR-800 is a sniper rifle, assault rifle hybrid, and we're just going to be considering the sniper rifle part for comparison in this video. The assault rifle mode could put it at best because it is a pretty good assault rifle, but we're talking about snipers in this best to worst, so we're going to do just that. And as always, we're talking about base weapons, no variants and all that stuff, and you're always encouraged to leave your own best to worst list down below in the comments. But let's get into the best sniper rifle in Infinite Warfare, in my opinion is the DMR-1. Now, this is a semi-auto sniper rifle, and it is really good for many reasons. It has eight in the clip, and it shoots pretty quickly and has a little recoil. It's a one shot to the head, a two shot to the body, and it's kind of like the M1 carbine. It kind of feels like an assault rifle, not a sniper rifle. It just has a lot of range. But this weapon also has no idle sway whatsoever for like the first three seconds when you aim down sights. You might pay attention to this gameplay. Once I aim down sight, there's there's no there's no idle sway whatsoever. It's just pinpoint accurate wherever it's pointing at. And then about three seconds later, it'll start to wobble a little bit. And then there's like very minimal idle sway. So it makes this weapon very easy to use. It's more like a marksman rifle rather than a sniper rifle. But it's classified as a sniper rifle in this game. It's the easiest to use. It kills quickly and technically if you're a quick scope headshot sniper god and you really go with sniper rifle This is gonna be the best weapon for you hands down because it's really quick to kill get straight to the point Get it all ranges best sniper rifle hands down now just a note for the initial best to worst, we're not adding classic weapons for all the weapon classes, but for snipers, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're a sniper, use the classic weapon unlock token on the TF-141, aka the Intervention, because it is a good, quick, reliable, bolt-action sniper. I'd put it at 2 in the sniper rifles, but that's like an unofficial ranking. We have a separate best to worst coming with classics, but it's really worth mentioning because it is a good sniper. But at the actual number 2 spot, I'm going to put the KBS Longbow. Now, the outcome of this list depended on whether I put the KVS or the Widowmaker at number two. I decided the KVS because it's powerful and you get less hit markers with the sniper rifle. I don't like getting hit markers when I'm sniping. So there's been a trend ever since like Modern Warfare 3 where we have like a slow, powerful bolt action sniper rifle and then a quicker, less powerful bolt action sniper rifle in each game. The KVS fits the slower, powerful bolt action sniper rifle, but they really emphasize the slowness of uh, the KVS in Infinite Warfare. The KVS has slower movement speed, slower aim down sights, it takes longer to rechamber in between rounds, it also forces you to unscope when you rechamber. I didn't even notice that until a friend pointed it out. But after you shoot, it forces you to unaim down sights and have to re-aim down sights again. This also has a lot of idle sway. The EBR-800 has a lot of idle sway too. Uh, you get six shots in the clip, but with all those downsides, it's still very powerful. And I don't get as many hit markers with it compared to other snipers. You just have to be a little bit more cautious and you know, kind of duck behind cover as you rechamber and then pop back out and snipe someone in the head. I, I just did the best with it while I was going for a diamond. I had the most enjoyment using the KBS longbow compared to the other traditional snipers, and that's why it's at number two. Now, at number three, we have the EBR-800. Again, we're just talking about the sniper rifle portion of the EBR, but this is a semi-auto sniper rifle. It has six shots in it. Like the longbow, again, it has a lot of idle sway, but I like to compare this weapon to the Barrett 50 Cal from previous Call of Duties. It has a lot of kick when you shoot the weapon, which the Barrett 50 Cal had, which makes this weapon pretty much unsprayable. You have to take your time and aim your shots, just like you have to do with the Barrett. Now, this is an energy weapon, so so there's no penetration which is kind of nice to have when using a sniper rifle because people like to hide behind cover so that's kind of a downside but the energy weapons also regen bullets in this game so it's kind of nice because sometimes you don't have to reload your weapon after you take a couple shots which is nice in certain situations now i do get some hit markers when i use this weapon like uh, for example
example, like sometimes I think when I hit them in the chest, they should have died, but they don't, which makes it feel a little less powerful than me did in the KVS, which is why I'm putting it below the KVS. But again, in hindsight, this weapon has AR mode too. It shreds. It's a good sniper. It feels powerful. Just a bit slower because of the massive kick, but it's nice to be able to switch between the sniper and AR for certain situations, and the EBR is at number three. Now, finally, at worst, we have the widow maker at number four this is a bolt action like the kvs but it has the complete opposite traits of the kvs it has the same movement speed as the rest of the snipers which is a tad bit faster than the kvs has faster aim down sight faster rechamber doesn't force you out of scoping when you shoot a shot it also has very little idle sway not no idle sway at the dmr one but it's very little and this has 12 bullets in the clip which you get six shots out of because this weapon shoots two shots at one, well not two shots at once but it fires two shots in rapid succession now this weapon is a one shot headshot otherwise anywhere else on the body it's going to take two shots to hit even if the enemy is at full health now you have the one shot headshot dmr which it even two taps people in like the same time as the widowmaker you have the one shot body shot with the ebr and the kbs so why would i want to chance to miss one bullet with the widowmaker and not get the kill like i i don't get it Two bullets is cool. I guess a more technical reason to have two bullets is like it's a physical representation of the lower damage, faster handling sniper rifle instead of just saying it has less damage in the stats, which is nice to know, but it's just not good in my opinion. I got a lot of hit markers with this. Uh, also, the scope when you aim down sight is very narrow. It's almost like you have tunnel vision, but I mean, it's usable. It's not hard to hit both bullets, but I'd rather use all the other sniper rifles over this Widowmaker. Uh, aggressive quick scopers might like this because it's not slow. It's uh, easy to be active with this weapon. But again, we don't do classic weapons here, but the intervention is the weapon for that. Uh, personally, I prefer a more powerful sniper rifle over quickness in Infinite Warfare because this game's just too fast paced to be running around with sniper rifles compared to older CODs in my opinion. But that's that. That's my best to worst list for these snipers. Let me know your own best to worst list down below in the comments. Let me know if you agree with me. Uh, you can comment on my list. Do whatever. But that covers all the main primaries for Infinite Warfare. Next time we're going to be covering all of these secondaries. And then the classic weapons in a bit of a different style of an episode. And then I don't know what's after that. We might continue. We might not. We might go do some Modern Warfare best to worst. I don't know. We'll see you in the future. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Sinister Skater. Be sure to subscribe to future Call of Duty and gaming content if you guys aren't already. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace out.